الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد some additional fawaid and for clarity we'll quickly go over the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha regarding the rulings pertinent to the haid the you know, the woman during her men- uh, menstrual cycle uh and her entering the masjid and some other masail like that an aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat kuntu agtasilu ana wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ina'i wahidin kilana junub ruahu bukhari wa muslim فكان يأمرني فأتزر فيبشرني وأنا حيد رواه بخاري ومسلم وفي حديث غير ذلك وكان يخرج رأسه إلي وهو معتكف فاغسله وأنا حيد In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها collected in Bukhari and Muslim Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said that I myself in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to uh, wash ourselves together meaning take a shower together or clean themselves together from one container and both of the, both of us were junub meaning they, they both they from after having se- uh, sexual relations akramakum Allah that they were washing together and then in a, another narration she said and he used to uh, order me to wear the waist sheet and he would um enjoy me and i was on my men- menstrual during my menstrual cycle meaning that they they were able the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would uh touch aisha and and so forth have affection towards her uh while she was during her menstrual cycle w- without of course entering her and that's why she was wearing the waist sheet to prevent from those from her uh lower than her her waist being a part of that enjoyment and in another narration wa kana yukhriju rasahu ilay wa huwa mu'takafun faqsaluhu wa ana hayd so in another narration that he used to uh extend his head outside of the uh perhaps the the window while he was in the masjid make making uh itikaf and she would wash his head you know wa- wash his hair and he and she was hayd radiyallahu ta'ala anha in this hadith there's immense benefits that the ulama bring about and i believe some of the questions that were posed pertinent to this hadith will be answered in these benefits so one of the things that the scholars mention uh for one the reason why the hayd should not uh enter the masjid this is this is the illa the 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 reason behind that and the wisdom behind that qala shaykh uh, ali basam rahimahullah ta'ala an al hayda la tudkhul al masjid la illa talothaha talothuhu uh wa li hadha kana nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam yukhriju ilayha fi baytiha rasuhu وهو في مسجد فتغتسله مما يدل على ان قرب الحيض لا مانع منه لمثل هذه الاعمال وقد شرع توصيا بعد الحرج اليهود so the prophet uh, so sheikh ali basam rahimahullah ta'ala he said that the reason he said that that first and foremost he he laid out the hukum the ruling and he said that the haid the one the woman who's menstruating does not enter it's not permissible for her to enter into the masjid then he gives the reason the illa he said and this is because she will 
perhaps she will, uh, you know, that najasa, meaning the, the blood, will make the, the masjid dirty or filthy. Okay, meaning that blood will get on the masjid. So this is the reason. It doesn't have to do with the the body of the woman, that she is najasa. As the Prophet wasallam said in another hadith, uh, the hadith of uh, Abi Huraira, when he was he was shy because he was junub to be around the Prophet wasallam, and so he hid from the Prophet wasallam when he saw him in Medina, and he went to his home and he took a shower and then he came back to the Prophet wasallam and the Prophet wasallam said Aina kuntu ya Abu Huraira where were you Abu Huraira and he said kuntu junub he said I, you know I was junub and to the rest of the hadith and then in the end the Prophet wasallam said innal mu'min he said subhanallah innal mu'min la yanjas he, so then he, the Prophet Sallallahu gave an express, an expression of ta'ajjab, meaning that, you know, this was something that was, um, like strange or, you know, and, and, and just making a, 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 a point saying, subhanallah, you know, glory be to Allah. Verily the Muslim or the, the, the mu'min does not become, uh, a nudges. Letting us know, that the believer and even the disbeliever their bodies and there are some differences of opinion there but regarding some of those issues but their physically their physical bodies are not nudges they're not nudges otherwise yeah anyhow they're not nudges but the najasa related to someone who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to do with their uh, their aqidah their belief this is his. Uh, uh, this isn't hisia. There's najasa hisia, or najasa, or najasa uh, manawiya, and so this is najasa manawi, meaning that they are najasa najasa in the sense that they do not believe in tawhid because of the shirk. It's because of the shirk because of the polytheism, and it has nothing to do with the body. So human beings are not najas, even if the woman. So th that hadith right there is evidence to also illustrate for us that the haith, the woman who is on her menstrual period, is not nudges. She is not nudges. Lidatiha. She, her, her herself is not nudges. But it's the fluid that's coming out is nudges. Just in the same way as human beings, akramakum Allah, we go to the restroom and najasa leaves from us that doesn't mean we were najasa when we were holding the urine or holding the defecation of Allah in our bodies but rather that waste itself is najis that is najasa that comes out from us but we are not najis and the, likewise the haith is the same way some of the benefits from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Shaykh mentioned and will reiterate for clarity is that this hadith shows that it's permissible uh, for the husband and wife to shower together you know in their when they're junub or otherwise from one water container another uh, benefit of this hadith is it shows that it's permissible for the husband and wife to enjoy each other except for the private part during her menses meaning a man cannot enter the woman uh, in her vagina Allah, during her menstrual cycle another benefit of this hadith is that also related to that Sheikh Ali Basam also mentioned that it isn't the the, the body of the hayat which is the body of the height, the, the woman menstruating is, is pure. But it, she, it, it, is, it is not permissible to have relations due to the fact that the najasa, the najasa of the height, meaning the, the menstrual blood itself, that's the reason. So again, he re reiterates in the benefits of the hadith about the point that the woman herself does not become impure. Uh, najasa meaning impure or dirty or filthy no 
so Islam shows shows you the beauty of Islam versus some other faiths which regard the woman to be dirty during her menses. No. And that's why a man and a woman can enjoy one another in other ways, the husband and wife, uh, during the menstrual cycle, except for the private part, except for the man entering his wife uh, in her vagina, akramakum Allah. So it shows that uh, the woman herself is pure, but it's just that najasa is coming from her, her height. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is it shows the that it is recommended that a woman during her menses, of course, she takes steps to uh, prevent that through their excitement and arousal that they would have sexual relations during her menses by wearing a waist sheet or some sort of protective garment. Another benefit of this hadith is that, uh, and, and this is related to that, and, and, and a fifth principle, as we mentioned before, uh, said the the Ria, where this is taking the appropriate steps to prevent the woman, prevent the husband and the wife from having sexual relations by cutting off the the path that leads to it, which is by her wearing a garment or, or you know wearing something, uh, her her pads or what have you, so that way the man does not, out of excitement, try to enter her or or, or what have you. Uh, another thing that Sheikh Ali Bassam mentions here, he says also this hadith illustrates the prohibition for the women to enter the masjid. And we already mentioned why, because so that way is not to spread uh, blood or, or filth in the masjid. And then the last thing, or another thing Sheikh mentioned, is that or we'll, we'll go to the last fight that he mentions, is that the person who is during, making it to calf, that it's permissible for the, it, it is not considered that they have left the masjid if they, if their head is uh, outside the masjid or any of their body parts, for example, an arm, they have to reach outside the masjid or, or a leg and something by a body part, unless it's only considered that they've left the masjid if all of their body has left the masjid. So this is something that the Sheikh mentions there. So by the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu stuck his head out to be washed, his hair, this does not uh, negate or his his it, his ittikaf. You know, his ittikaf was still, of course, Sahih Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it shows us that that's the benefit that we gain from this hadith is that that does not negate the fact that a person is still in itikaf uh, by their head sticking out of the uh, masjid. Then we move on to the issue. So we mentioned why, uh, but related to uh, something else I said in one of the previous sittings regarding haith, which is very important to clarify, is that... Uh, one of the things the haith is prohibited from, uh, according to majority of the ulama, doesn't mean all of the ulama hold this view, but we'll, we'll just uh, stick with the majority. And this is the goal that I, I go with, the statement that I go with, because I feel it is the most safest. And this is in accordance with what I what I studied with uh, those mashaykh that I studied with hold this view. So is one thing is that the haith, she's prohibited from reading the Qur'an, Meaning holding and, and well holding the mushaf, and also sitting in the masjid. But what we do have to know here and realize that there there's the evidences that are used for prohibiting this generally are not sound evidence and not very strong evidence. So, uh, just out of out of ah, what is ah, what what is safest. And to be away from the khilaf is the woman should leave that because there are a hadith and athar mentioning uh, prohibiting the woman from reading the Quran and going in the masjid. But however, they most of them are not authentic, or that there's great difference of opinion between the ulama of ahla hadith about their authenticity. So this is where the difference regarding that uh, that issue. Those two issues about reading the Quran, you know, holding the mushaf, and 
sitting in the masjid. And another thing that needs to be clarified is I know I said previously uh, about the woman uh, using gloves and what I have here uh, after returning and looking back in my notes here is that it should be as uh, the Mashaikh say and I'm not sure if any of the Mashaikh say you can just use gloves but that it should be a something which is not attached so actually gloves here I have in my notes that gloves are not permissible to use because it should be something munfasal bihail munfasal meaning that it should be something uh, like a garment or something which is separate between the hands and the and and holding the Quran and, and it should be munfasal from the body meaning that it should not be uh, like gloves are they're not a part of the body but they're kind of not considered uh, separate in that respect and this is and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best so instead maybe a cloth or something to to be between the woman who's menstruating and holding the Quran and again even if you hold the view that a woman cannot read the Quran or hold the mushaf and uh, sit in the masjid that does still does not mean she is najis these are ahkam shari so all the hikmas and wisdom we may not uh, always know all the uh, reasons but we say it is to abadi that when even if we don't know the hikmah for some things in the sharia for example wiping over the the socks or the hoofs on the top instead of the bottom okay if we were to use our intellect we would probably think oh we should do it on the bottom but no the shara is perfect and that's how it came and so we follow that in a as an act of worship meaning that the prophet sallallahu wiped over the khufain on the top of the khufain so we as an act of worship we wipe over the top of the khufain following the prophet sallallahu alaihi in his sunnah and he uh, and, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what is the reason for that but it's an act of worship and we follow that act of worship in accordance with the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu so it isn't that we always are going to know all the uh all the reasons and all the uh wisdoms behind something or you know for and so this also applies with the height of the wisdom like we know the reason why she shouldn't uh maybe go in the masjid because of course she can leave najasa in the masjid but we don't know all the reasons of why for example not holding the mushaf and things like this but instead we make taslim in our hearts you know and follow the nasus meaning the, the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu and the way of the salaf of this ummah and anything i said that was correct was from allah anything i said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam